Yes. Greetings, people. Greetings, people. I don't want to say Happy New Year because it might not be a Happy New Year. So I'm going to say good luck for the New Year. Good luck for the New Year. Yeah. You know, my New Year's, my New Year's res resolution is that I want to do something positive. I want to make some positive videos that can possibly help people out, you know. Because, um, as you can see, as some of you know, may know I work on trains. Yeah, because what it is, I've got a couple of videos on my channel, as some of you may know about trains. I've got one, um, it's called Toolbox Tour, Train Engineers Toolbox Tour, where I just show like, the kind of tools that, that I used, what I've got on my toolbox that I used to work on trains. And that video was quite popular, you know? And a lot of people asked me questions about trains and how I got into trains. And I've got one or two other videos on my channel as well about trains and them videos are very popular, you know? Because what it is, train, train engineering is one of them things you don't really hear people chat about it a lot. Because like on YouTube, for example, on YouTube is, I see loads of videos of people chatting about car mechanics, plumbing, um, electricians, aerospace engineering. But when it comes to train engineering, it's not a thing where you really hear a lot of people talk about it. It's one of them sort of subjects. And plus I get like a lot of, a lot of family, I, I, I get a lot of friends always asking me questions about trains, you know, train engineering. So I thought this year I'm going to make a number of videos on various subjects to do with trains, train engineering, you know. I thought I'd try and do something positive, you know, try and pass on some positive information that could help help people possibly finding, you know, maybe find a job in this industry. Yeah, train engineering is not a thing you, you, that you really hear people talk about. So a lot of people are curious about certain things within this industry. Yeah, that's my plan really, just to make a couple of videos, as I said, about various topics, because there's a lot of things about the real industry that the public do not know and that the public get it wrong and get mixed up. Like for myself, for example, when people ask what I do when I say that I'm a train service engineer when I tell them that I work on trains they automatically think I work on tracks because I get people asking these questions about, about the tracks because they, they think it's all one subject but it's not so I have to explain to them that working on the tracks and working on the trains itself they're two completely different subjects they're not the same thing it's just like I get people there's one there was in the supermarket the guy saw my uniform and said, oh, you, oh you're, you're an engineer, you work on the trains. I said to him, yeah. And he started asking me questions about the engineering works and the tracks. So I tell him, like, I don't work on the tracks. I do not know. You know I work on the, trains, on the trains itself. I work in the workshop. So it's things like that I want to clear up, you know, and um, um, put people straight. And also I like to get these videos I'm going to make out to the youth as well. The younger generation because you know you get a lot of people a lot of young people they leave school they go to university and they go and study things like drama music sports science what's the other one film studies then they come out of the university then they wonder why they can't find no work in their field they wonder why they can't get no job because those sort of fools, yeah, they sound cool, they sound nice, but them sort of jobs, it's only a, f a few selected few that are gonna get those sort of positions. So in those sort of jobs, those sort of fields, it's very hard, you know? So I think a lot of like youth need to think outside the box, you know? And don't just look at those sort of subjects. Because let's face it, not everyone's gonna be some big movie, was it film star like Steven Spielberg? Not everyone can do that, you know. Or what's the other one? Or you, know? oh, you know what I mean. And also during this COVID right now, yeah, a lot of people are out of work, you know. A lot of people are out of work in certain industries, but me, 
I still got work, I'm classed the key worker. Because at the end of the day, people need trains. People have to travel. Doctors, nurses, police officers, all these sort of people rely on public transport. They rely on it, you know. But if you look at other industries out there, like, I don't know, all those people that work in gyms, for example, you know, some of them probably go to university and done sports science and not now. They're out of work right now. Because, um, yeah, them, them sort of fields, the way you have to look at it is um, things like music, drama, them sort of subjects. As we can see, we don't really need those sort of things. They're sort of like a luxury. We don't need them. Music, we don't need it, you know. But when it comes to engineering, it's always going to be need for engineers, you know. Without engineers, think about it, we wouldn't have no internet right now, no telephone. So engineers are needed right now, they're needed. Engineers are always going to be needed. Yeah, as I said, I just, I've, I've just noticed a gap in the market for this. As I said, there's loads of YouTubers out there chatting about the car industry and car mechanics, but no one that really talking about train engineering. So, as I said, you know, I thought I'd share the information out there, you know. This is like an intro video, intro video. Like a bit about myself. I've been working on trains for over nine years now, but we're soon coming up to the 10 year mark. Not long into the 10 year mark we're coming up to. But time's gone so fast, you know. It feels just, it feels like the other day I started working on trains, you know. Time has gone so quick. I can remember slow, so clearly the first day I started working, working on trains. Time has gone so quick. Yeah, I know some of you are probably wondering, why is it all wrapped up like that? Why is this guy wrapped up like he's some kind of burglar, criminal? Well, it's the rule now in the workshop, because I'm at work at the moment, that everyone has to wear a mask. And they're given, the company have actually given that mask to everybody. They're giving us those disposable ones. See them cheap disposable with white ones. One side is white and the other side is blue. Not them cheap throwaway ones. But every so often we get a pack of them. But the thing about those, those ones is that they're okay to wear for like half an hour at a time, like, you know, here and then. Put it on, then take it off, pull it down. But to wear that all day, it's not really practical, you know. But also they're giving us um, those black ones, the, the, um, the reusable ones that you can wash. But the thing about them ones, I find it very hard breathing through, through, those, through, through, through those ones. I don't like them, you know. So this is, this is one of the reasons why I'm wearing this. This is the motorbike, mot motorcycle mask for motorcyclists. I just find it a lot easier to breathe through this and more practical. Is that like for example, like if I'm getting a bit warm, yeah, a bit hot, I can just pull this down. Yeah, if I see the manager, yeah, I can just pull it up. You can't say nothing, pull it up quick, quick. Yeah, because years ago, I used to ride a motorcycle when I was younger, and I went in Lidl's, and I saw these Lidl's, and there was two in the pack. So I bought them, but I never use them. I do that sometimes. Sometimes I buy things, but I never use it. And I just sling it down in one corner. And the other day I was at home, just sitting down, I thought to myself, oh yeah, I've got a packet of those motorbike masks somewhere. I thought to myself, let me give it a try. It might be more comfortable to wear one of those motorcycle masks all day than wearing them stupid masks they give us. So I thought I'd give it a try. And do you know what? It's a lot more comfortable wearing this all day. And plus, it protects my, um, my face as well. Keeps my face from, from getting dirty. It stops the dirt from getting to my hair when I'm underneath the train as well. So it's very practical wearing this mask. I find it very practical. So that's why I'm wearing this mask. Now you know why. And as I said before, to the youth out there, yeah? You know, not everyone can be a rapper. Not everyone can be a Stormzy or what's, what's one of them singers or what's, what's that singer's name, Adele or not everyone can be a, 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 um, Adele or be some big time movie star 
know, you've got to be realistic, you know, you have to be really realistic. Not everyone's going to make it in those sort of fields, so you have to be realistic, you know, when it comes to thinking about careers. But as I said, engineering is a good thing to get into, you know, it's always going to be a need for engineers. But anyway, this first part of the video is coming to an end now, you know, this video is coming to an end. So yeah, yeah, keep a lookout, you know. As I said, we've got various topics on various subjects within the train engineering industry, you know. So yeah, that's it for the first part of the introduction video. Okay, I'm gone.